It's early June. The 76th summer Pat MacDonald has spent on the shores of Loch Foyle. He is one of the oldest and one of the last drift net fishermen in Europe. Every year his family gathers to lower their boats into the waters of the loch in search of salmon. But this annual ritual is being brought to a halt by powers beyond their control. Pat's brother-in-law, Charlie, has fished these waters for over 40 years. Mark may never get the chance again to help his granddad mend his nets. Who our way back, Mark? Who out our way back? The family lives on the shores of Loch Foyle, one of the richest salmon estuaries in Europe. For centuries, these small coastal communities have relied on drift netting for a vital part of their income. But drift netting has its enemies. The netmen have been for killing them all. No such a thing in the book. Because the netmen was catching them on surely and there were piles of fish going on, piles of fish going up. Loch Foyle is one of the last places in Europe to allow drift netting. No new licenses are being issued. So these men must hold onto their precious permits to protect their way of life. As you say, this, this, this will be Costa's last stand. This will be our last stand here. So what will this season bring? Day 1, June 15th, 5 a.m. Pat checks the tide. Today, his nephew Declan will man the engine. Fishing starts at 6, and everyone wants their nets in the water by then. Pat picks a spot that will carry the net without snagging it on the shore or on the lighthouses that border the deep water channel. In position, he checks the time and shoots the first net of the season. The net is carried by the tide through the water. It drifts. Each net is a thousand yards long and about six feet deep, with weights on the bottom and floats on top, so it hangs like a curtain in the water. The salmon travel on the tide, and the drifting net catches those unlucky fish that attempt to swim through it. may leave the net out for hours. Almost 60 years experience has taught him where the best places are and when to be there. Once the net is out, all you can do is wait and wait. There's time for Pat to get a few things off his chest. Them the kite last year now, that's what you call SSF. What's that? Sailor Sight Farmers. That's all they're good for. Sell a site and buy another big four-wheel drive tractor. Them suppose it's getting the money. Anybody that did save up on your pound and did keep it in one thing or another. Bertie and the rest of the crew went up there and took it after. The revenue come up. If you couldn't save up on your pound, they're going to get after you. They're right. Well, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Take a percentage of it. Oh, that's beyond talking about. I'm an old pincher, never nothing. Never nothing. And I got a letter too. His son calls from Dublin to check on the catch. 
steady yourself now. You you wouldn't even see one jumping or nothing. Now, now you, you wouldn't see a trout or nothing jumping. Nothing. Maybe he spoke too soon. Week one yields a harvest of just two fish, not enough to justify the 15 mile journey to the fishmonger. Week two. And it's the turn of Pat's youngest son, James. Each of his sons will take holidays from work to go out with their dad. They've been helping to crew the boat since they were seven. Bridie has watched each of her children join Pat on the boat. Well, boys, had the fish. How you want them? Fish on Eden Rose, weren't they? They had to get their share like all the rest. Why not? If I'd have been too, I would have been looking for my share. They had no money, they never left at the door in their life. Never did. I had to work for the living, with myself, and McDonald. And you thought more of it. Surely she must have worried about the boy's safety. Of course, that's a silly question to ask. We're down out in the boat be Pat, why would I not worry about them? Couldn't come off me if anything happened. They must keep a constant lookout for the huge boats that share this major shipping channel in and out of the busy port of Derry. Things aren't looking good. Pat holds in another empty net. Yet again, they wait. There's none for the shooting itself. Meanwhile, the drug trade here has continued to grow, fueled by rising supply and demand. Gun crime has also risen sharply. The week comes to a close, with nothing to show for their 12-hour days. I tell you that I have been out there for a mighty long time, for years, and I never saw the sparrows. You could go out today and get none, one or two, and somebody beside you could get twenty. Do you know? But there's nobody get none. But should be there, obviously. I have my time done that. But it's for the up and coming generation if there won't be anything for them. For my own boys and their families coming up, if you understand. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking of. And Charlie isn't faring much better. Lost. I had not hunted salmon last year. No. I hadn't hunted salmon the year before. I think even before that, I remember, there was someone the year before I had 300 and I had pushing 300. And I never had, never, never was as low as this. Yeah. Never. Salmon has always filled Pat's summers. Now a pensioner, 
In his younger days, he spent the rest of the year helping neighboring landowners with their sheep and doing general farm work. While the cost of the license has gone up, the value of the catch has been falling steadily. Pat still has his first license and his earliest receipts for salmon. That's 1959. 59 looks like. And it was eight pound. And that meal was 19, 1960. I was 12 pound. I put up four pound in one year. You see there, there's sterling and punch lock. Yeah. 230 sterling and 368 in euros. Yeah, the price of them in 1960. Five and pound. And for six salmon there, you got 14 pound and six months. 14 pound and six months. And them six salmon there weighed 51 pound. That's how, that's how it licenses. That's how it licenses. Why do you keep them? If I hadn't them, I couldn't show you. Anybody that comes in here then to tell me this, that, or a million, many years of spy, I can turn about and never talk and tell you. I can show to you. And then that's the proof of it. Do you understand? Does that answer your question? It does indeed, yes. Yeah. yes. Salmon licenses are issued by the Locks Agency. Lock Foil has no agreed border, and the Foil Fisheries Commission became the first cross border body in 1952. Under the Belfast Agreement, the Commission became the Locks Agency with headquarters in Derry. Their patrol boat polices the fishing. The temple, there's buildings just underneath it. That's our official line. Our boats would operate from there, between there and Malin Head. We would go right into the port just before Miss Halley as you're coming back up the river where the, uh, the dump is in the mouth of the River Falcon. That's the, the, the lock in the sea area. Outside the confines of the lock, the boats are larger. They can use longer and deeper nets, and their owners tend to be younger men. They make their living from the sea, fishing for crab and lobster when the salmon season is over. The mixed income way of life of the boatmen inside the lock is dying out. Younger men are getting full-time jobs in dairy and in the booming construction sector. Before it was never really properly policed, if you can use the term policing. You know, it was unregulated, shall we say. It was regulated but not uh, by the presence of the boat. Okay, so they it's, resented you quite yeah, a lot. Yeah, and, uh, was, I say, and before the Navy would have come up as well. Um, it could have been a bit heavy handed on either side, but like, they called us the Navy boat. There's the Navy boat coming. Yeah. The calls over the radio has settled down from, I say, 10 years ago. You get shot at and stoned. And, uh, so it was definitely. It was rough in the early days. <laughs> The patrol boat makes sure no one drops their nets before 6 in the morning or after 6 in the evening and licenses are regularly inspected. The season is poor all round and everyone is eager for news of the salmon count and whether or not there'll be an extension to the six week season. Last count last night was 6158 and they nearly stopped. The locks agency count the salmon that make it up the river. Are we getting some of these tags back in that? Target for keeping the river system healthy is a minimum of 8,000. If it goes above that by 23rd of July, they can get an extension of four days. No, it's only happened once in no. recent memory. From the beginning of May to like yesterday, there was 5,000 fish in blue, but over the full year, there was only 6,000. Where's the second one? Aye. Yeah, after another 100 tag there. How's things? Oh, well, we might squeeze one or two out for you. If they're no extension like they know, I'll look at them. I'm 
Ja, ja, ja. Det gjør deg. Ja, man don't have to take us for a couple of weeks to care. I love the Men are faring badly. Ah, we're a very poor season. Then. When the fishing's poor, you don't fish as much. Like you make hours a lot shorter. And and then when when you get older too, like you shorter hours do you know. <laughs> The McCormick family have been buying from drift netters north and south for more than two generations. They are the last salmon mongers on the foil. People are coming in and catching now that it's normally it'd be embarrassing. Yeah. We've passed it to take them home to eat them, you know. Uh, these are 25 euro a kilo. In 1976, that's 30 years ago, we were paying uh, two pounds 80 and three pounds a pound for salmon. That was big money then. You know, it sure was. It's a yeah. hell of a lot more expensive than it is now. And yeah. if you take the inflation, you know, um, it has dropped. Yeah. They're getting 15 euros a kilo now, which is about 10, 11 pounds per kilo sterling, uh, which is five pounds a pound. So in real terms, it's, it's gone down quite dramatically. It's the third week of the season, and a second son, David, has travelled from Dublin to take his turn on the engine. Shoot straight across. You got a full sheet looking from here. Right on. It's nice tight. So is the tide turning yet? No. No. You're like everybody else in this country, you're in the wild horror. Time or tide are with nobody. And you must take your time and win for it. A seal has been spotted near the net. The next place you go up maybe about a hundred yards down there and throw it up there throw and up there. it about. When times were good, they were tolerated. This season, they could be the difference between break even and a dead loss. Now, they must constantly patrol the net. Seals aren't the only problem. In the last two years, huge boats have been spreading mussel seeds all over the loch's native oyster beds. Charlie thinks the mussel boats are scaring the salmon. If you uh, were living in a two-storey house, and you down below, and no flooring, and me dropping down shells and tabby, would you stay underneath? That's the way I'll put it to you. Well, that's what they're doing here. These boys are up putting out mussels here in the days we were fishing. They had no license. We have a license. They're bringing in mussels here 12 months a year and they're sending them away 12 months a year. You start asking the questions, you're a bad man, that's not Dredging for oysters used to keep the boats busy either side of the salmon season when the weather was still good. But mussel seeding has put paired to that. They come in now with mussels, big boats, four or five drudges half them, and rip and tore the whole thing apart. Now they spread mussels over the whole thing, the oysters finished. It's a start. I tell you, for the up and coming generation, there's nothing left of it. If you're educated to know these things, and they talk about these things, not me, not me, but I see it to tell you. I don't know, but see it. Back. 
It's tough work pulling in a thousand yards of wet nets. But even at 76, Pat insists on doing all the heavy work himself, leaving the engine to his sons. They can spend up to 12 hours in the water from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., Monday to Thursday. You want to see the look of this in the Mediterranean? No, I would not. I would say so. There's none there. No. Good shot there for five hours. We wished it in two sheets Sunday. Things are now serious. It's doubtful Pat will make back the cost of the license, let alone the petrol and his time. Have you been getting steadily worse? It's getting worse and worse this few years. It didn't just happen last year. No. Probably peaked before you started the fish. <laughs> <laughs> it peaked in 1942. I was only six or seven when I went fishing originally. I remember my older brother Paddy, who went out the same day as me, managed to get seasick and threw up all over me and we came in early, after about half an hour. So it was a big disappointment, but it was my first introduction to salmon fishing in the foil. Over the last 30 to 35 years, I've been on and off the, the, the tide, making some money during the summer when I've been off school and off university. Dad? If the season were to finish next year, it'll be interesting to see how he manages to, to cope with the change and where he'll put his energies next year because it will be like a huge change to his life and any of the older fishermen that are out there. I'm right there over 56 years. I never said all like it. Couldn't be worse. We're summarizing. We're up a boy again. It's lovely life over again. Disaster. You sort yourself out there. Uh -huh. Everybody's the same. Sure, look at the foil. See, there's no boats on it. They're in the 3rd of, of July, isn't it? Oh, uh oh. -huh. Uh -huh. It's the same whatever's going wrong. Bad one. Liam McCormick featured in a 1970s film about fishing on the foil. He has since retired from drift netting. There's always a tradition here, fishing salmon. You wouldn't like to see it go. Now with the decline, it's, uh, you can see it all around you, you know. I mean, people themselves have got very sort of down down about it, you know. There's a sort of no no light at the end of the tunnel, if you put it that way. You know. Why the, the sudden decline whenever, say, this last 10, 15 years? Has there been a real in-depth swallowed uh, into, see, what, what's really the decline? You no. Know? I mean, pollution and all sorts of other things in the upper rest stretches of the rubber. To me, that would be one of the very big things. Go you up and go you over the bridge and you look at the banks of the foil. There's nothing in the town can live on it. When I was young and going to school, that river was full of brown trout, wee fry and everything. And the wee fry can't lump up the river today. I tell you they're there two years. What are you going to say? You better tell them that they're loving muck. Will they? They're not loving muck. Nope, will not. But scientific counts of returning salmon show that foil stocks are healthy. This we call a clip fish. There's a, there's a micro tag in here. It's been embedded in the skull of that. I mean, that smoke was tiny. Okay. And they've got a little machine that tells them where it is. And that's how they do the stock assessment with the salmon. So the foil system is healthy. Like we're told the entire foil system is healthy. They get the required number of salmon up every year. In fact, they get more than the required number. And um, the only thing that appears to be happening is that the the catch rates at sea are dropping. Week four. Will Pat see evidence of these healthy salmon stocks?
yet another son, his namesake Paddy, joins him on the boat. For once, the net yields a return. Salmon hits the net just as it's being pulled in. He's a good size. This one would have been an angler's dream come true. Pat has first-hand experience of what anglers think of drift netting. And they'll come to eat a fish with a rod they said. I said not at all. Out of this year. Oh my guys know why. I was murdered. They were anglers from fishing rods. They didn't play they were all against this. You bet. Yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. They were cook boys, they were schoolmasters or swifters, so I don't make it tell you. Anglers have been lobbying for a ban on drift netting since the 1960s. Under the provisions of the Sea Fish Industry Bill, the Minister of Agriculture will have power to stop the drift net fishing of salmon. Now what will you do if this bill goes through Parliament? Oh, well, things will be very serious for us fellows here. They wouldn't let the working man get a living. Drift netting was banned in Scotland in 1962. Since then, angling groups throughout Europe have been pressing both governments and the EU to ban it here. Well, the roadmen's kitchen, more salmon than we were kitchen. I was picking the roadmen fishing in the big door there, back over Fort Nigel, and they had 30, 35 salmon caught with a rod. Really? Yeah, 35 salmon caught with a rod, up in the Gibbah River. Yeah. So there was some salmon there. In recent years, there has been talk of a buyout, perhaps even paid for by the anglers themselves. We'll be there to whatever time they finish it. If the roadman says that every salmon is worth a thousand pounds to them, well, if the 35,000 roadmen and them catching 35,000 salmon, the other boys is catching the salmon at the end, up in the forest, it's up. But I feel happy. Yeah. Well, give and take, 200,000. 200,000, they've paid off for no time. If they can make it, they can bring in the tourists, what they say they have. We're off for good. Yeah. None of our family ever can come back and not fall you over the fish. Nobody. Ever. So that's a good sign, four before seven? No, 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 no. No? <laughs> you might not see anything else. No. Well, just could be luck. That's what you call luck. The World Cup is dominating the airwaves, but Pat is not impressed. What good is the World Cup for my team? I can't get from the World Cup. I don't buy no petters. Was the World Cup not on in your house last night, no? It was on, but it's on. I don't buy me petters. Right. Okay. Well, of course, it's Look at a crowd of clowns running after a bag of worms. And maybe the one four in the pitch could blow you up a football. Oh, no, the other country's a waste, eh? I think.
The salmon are good, but the wind is rising and the tide is running so fast that the net is almost snagged on the light. She's round the lighthouse, that's it, you have to cut it off. In the racing tide, a cot has come adrift. Without it, Pat's 78-year-old neighbour has no way of getting ashore. The tide they've been waiting for is fighting the wind, whipping the waves to a frenzy. Even though the salmon are running, they must come ashore. Pat's catch of nine fish is good enough to justify the trip to the fishmonger. Last week, those size of fish there were making uh, 16 euros a kilo. The bigger fella would be 18 or 19. All right, thanks very much. Mind yourself, see you again. Hopefully, we'll have a look. Harry's suppliers aren't the only people netting salmon on the foil. Poachers are a constant threat. Harry has first-hand knowledge of their activities. Oh, yeah, I suppose I would have been part of the problem, all right. Only I was poaching on the seaward side. I wasn't poaching up on a pool about the size of somebody's living room. You know, I was poaching, I was taking a, giving the salmon a sporting chance at sea. Uh-huh. At night? Yeah. yeah. Two hours, two or three hours in the tide. But that doesn't matter if you fish for an hour. I mean, a poacher is a poacher, you know. Yeah. I haven't done it for quite some time, but I have to say I enjoyed it every minute of it. I think it's pathetic, to be perfectly honest, because uh, those salmon are being bought. Those people aren't poaching them for nothing. I haven't bought any of them. I don't buy them as a matter of principle, but um, they are being bought. They, I mean, they're not eating them. You know, there's only so many salmon you can eat, and quite frankly, uh, it's a dish best served cold in, in, in some senses. Poachers is the biggest threat. Because they're, they, they're there the whole season. If the rivers running really narrow rivers, times there's plenty of water in them, other times they're not. I have seen in my travels, I have seen nets coming from the rivers before Christmas, where men pitching were taking their salmon nets from the bridge of the river before Christmas, when the salmon was then spawning. The poachers always said that the only day they quit pitching is Christmas Day. They go off for the Christmas. And they're back for the spring salmon from then on again. Fishing has always been a central part of life for everybody in this community. I carry fish. Come to fish still do us. I John used to fish with daddy. See, they didn't know they played no use with me. I'll go back to the first bit of it. One time. Don't know that. My memory isn't so good now. My memory's not good. That's what my life does to you. 
When you first met Paddy, was he fishing? Fishing, sure to go. That's why I married him for, because he was fishing. Fishing with my big brother, James. Week five, Pat's eldest son, Michael, has flown from his home in the Netherlands to spend his summer holidays manning the engine. Stand there for a week like that. A good north week. While we wait, a seal pays an unwelcome visit. We're a flat fashion. Six. Ooh, you see that? Yeah. You have them at all? Did you get them? They'll be back again. That's a brick. Yeah. It was close there. He's a big one. That's him heading for the net. It is him heading for the net, yeah. Oh, there. Thank you. That's one. That's one ours. See the coast out now. Yeah. But yep, he got one. Do you see them chasing the sound into the nets? Yeah. Yeah. They can't feel the goodness. You could have the do beside it and have them pull it out of your hands, basically. Where's he gone now? <laughs> He's not here far enough away not to be used your answer. Not near far enough, Bernie, do you? They go down and they'll know what I'm flipping along the net, you see. And the gulls work with them, yeah? They see him talking about and they follow him about. They, you see if he gets a salmon, you see, and then he, when he chews it up, the mitts are in the water. And they pick it up. Yeah, he's playing with it, look. First shot and relief that the seal hasn't totally spoiled their catch. Knowing seals are around, Pat keeps checking the net. While some boats carry rifles, Charlie prefers a more humane and ingenious device to deter the seals. While everyone else has a pink boy, Charlie's is painted black. Well, the seal sees the red boy in the head for it. He thinks it's, a, it's his comrade when he sees the black forces to check it out. You know, he still soon figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> they patrol the water far better than the British Army could patrol the north. Because once they got along with it, they never left us. <laughs> Although the seal took his share, the catch is still a reasonable 11 fish. Even at the mongers, the talk is about seals. Did the end see the story the fire commission? No, they said they didn't eat salmon. They had sandwich. Uh, I said, the way would you eat months if I was steak them? I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You didn't give yeah. me an answer to that. I know, I know. The seal population has grown out of all proportion here, and they become hungry. There are seals now up in Castle Finn. 
there are no natural predators around here. Since they stopped culling the seals years ago, they've had to spread. And they've come all the way from the north of Scotland, Faroe, Shetland. They're a very intelligent animal. And they've become somehow conditioned now. You know, this six or eight weeks. They know when the, when the salmon season's coming. And they know the easiest way to catch them. And they don't eat the whole salmon, they just eat the intestine. And the, the stomach cavity. They eat the roe and the livers. They're full of iron, they're full of vitamins, you know. And it takes an awful lot of stomachs of salmon to feed the seal. You know. It's the final week. The catch so far, 23 salmon. The worst season on record. Pat must catch at least 10 salmon this week to cover his costs. Prices have fallen. So the big salmon that you caught, what was it, three and a half kilos? Four and a half. Four and a half. How much did you get for that? Sixty-five. So did anyone get eighteen pound a kilo or nineteen pound a kilo? I think the first week or so. First, ah, first week. Yeah. That was only nine pounds. That went down on first day. Yeah. Nine D bank. Yeah. On them nine pounds you charged twenty-five pounds. Woo! Ah. Just three salmon. Charlie's luck is also poor. There's only 30 salmon caught up to the end of the day. I've uh, seen years we're back and we caught 230 salmon, 30, 34 salmon one week. You could have done that. Anywhere and seen salmon jumping anywhere. Well, from the 60s, we've took our restrictions. We've got nothing back. We've given everything. Got nothing in return. I don't think we'll buy us half. I don't think it. No. We'll try and starve us half. I don't know what job. Where did you see my About ten or so? Where the tenner? They're not out fishing, but they may as well be. Some say fishermen go mad during the short season. They spend little or no time in bed, rising every day at four for six weeks. And they spend their weekends in sweaty anticipation of Monday morning. Not the damn ball out there now, Rankins. The final day is a rough one. There's still no word on next season. Rumours are rife that a small number of licences may be issued, but the speculation is causing frustration. We're reasonable men. At all times, we always were. We're all biting in the sea. As the saying is, this, this will be Costa's last stand. This will be our last stand here. This is, this is our right. 
They're taking it away. The threatened ban raises other fundamental questions. What are we then? What do we become then? I mean, do, uh, do we become a fishing area or do we become a living museum? To, you know, for visitors to come and look at these quaint little people doing their jobs that used to be done a hundred years ago, you know? A good day. 17 salmon. But overall, was the season worthwhile? The season was the worst season ever I fished enough for it. I'm fishing uh, from 1958, and this is the worst season ever I had. I had less than 50 salmon for the season. The first year wasn't dead. How badly? I was dead with 30 pounds this season. Good Master Charlie Bradbury from London Dairy Town with all his charge. We don't catch fifty salmon. But to pay the expenses, that's all we're out of it. But from a clear's expenses, you're out no money. As regards going out to think you're going to get a big week's pay or as you know, or something like that there out the window. I enjoy it there. I like my elders out there and I like going out. I like going out. When you're at the thing, you're really looking forward to it, coming. Surely it's great. I tell you, I fished all my days in the summertime. And as long as you get fishing, I won't. The season finished, they can finally relax with a bit of a hooli. Eight o'clock in the morning, sure it was a splendid scene. Could you see the young men assemble round the church at the scene? And half past eight they were on it, and then they were away. They drove up on the mighty. The family gathers again to lift the boats from the waters of the loch. Drift netting keeps them busy from March to October and fills the dark winter months with conversation. Soon, there'll be only memories. An era is drawing to a close.